So it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Psychosocial Oncology Training Academy. I'm Dr. Diane Tucker. I'm one of the psychologists with the Supportive Care Clinic at UAB. Our goal is to provide resources to mental health and primary care professionals so they can better meet the unique needs of breast cancer survivors. Each breast cancer survivor has a unique story, but common themes emerge. Hearing those stories provides an important foundation for us as mental health professionals. Today, Ms. Edwina Caldwell Mack will be my guest. She has recently completed treatment and will share her experience. Ms. Mack, could you introduce yourself and yes. describe your experience with breast cancer? Um, my name is Edwina Caldwell Mack, and my experience has been <clears throat> eventful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has been hard. It has been challenging. Mm -hmm. There's been um, challenges at the beginning, challenges in the middle, and challenges at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's been challenging all the way through. Okay. Let's start with what were some of the challenges at the beginning? Um, the diagnosis initially. Mm -hmm. And then once I was got the diagnosis, the first thing that came to my mind was I was worried about my son. He was actually becoming a junior, because he's a senior now. And <clears throat> I was very concerned about him being able to maintain his grades and deal with this. So um, me and my husband, we sat down with him and talked to him and told him that um, I had breast cancer. and But I was gonna be okay, is what I told him. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be okay, I'm not going anywhere. I just, I'm just gonna be, I'm not gonna be myself. I'm not gonna look like myself, but I'm still here and I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, also, <clears throat> when the doctors, when my team was formed, they actually told me that if you're gonna get breast cancer, this is the best kind of breast cancer to have. And That's an interesting message, isn't it? Yes, very interesting because I was like, to me, Breast cancer was, I'm not going to say a death sentence, but cancer, any type of cancer, mm -hmm. you don't want to hear it, you don't want to have it. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of intrigued by that response from them. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked, what does that mean? And they told me that at, at the present day, at this present time, we have a medication that targets your type of breast cancer and kills it. So, of course, I cheered up. At that point, I was very, very excited that um, my, my actual breast cancer was curable, mm -hmm. if you wanna say that, but um, it, was, it could be targeted and treated. So I was excited about that. Then, they told me all the steps that I was gonna have to take, which was chemo and then radiation. Mm -hmm. So I had heard about chemo, but I didn't really know how it felt or what, what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the people that I had, the people that I knew that had breast cancer didn't have to have chemo. So I didn't know all of the challenges that came along with that. Mm -hmm. and. The main problems that I had with the chemo is it made me very, very sick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't eat because nothing tasted like it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. I lost my sense of taste mm -hmm. and everything just tasted bad. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to eat. <clears throat> so I became very ill because I was not putting any type of proteins or anything in my system because I wasn't eating. And I had really, really bad diarrhea. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, not, it's like, okay, I, I had my first colonoscopy about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that they give you to drink is to clean out your, your gastric system. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> mm -hmm. that is what I compare that to, cleaning out your system, because it's coming out. It's coming out. Everything in you is coming out. Mm -hmm. 
Some things you want to come out, some things you don't want to come out. It's just, everything is just coming out. It's clear, clearing you out. So, um, and how long did that go on? That would go, with, with the type that I was on, the type of medication that I were, was on, I wouldn't feel the symptoms until about four days after that chemo um, infusion. Four days after that, it would start. And it would start with the diarrhea mm -hmm. and the vomiting. And just not being able to do anything because I was just so weak. And it would last maybe about 10, 10 to 14 days. And then it was, I would have to get chemo every three, every three weeks. So right at the point where I'm starting to be able to taste the food and feel like myself again, it's time to go back. And how long, did, how many times did you have, have chemo? Ooh, I had chemo from August the 27th up until December the 18th. So I had it every three weeks from that time frame, within that time frame. What did you learn about yourself during this period? I can be resilient, that mm -hmm. I am stronger than I thought I was because it put me in a position where I was totally dependent on my husband. Thank mm -hmm. God for him because if he hadn't been there, I don't know what I would have been, what I would have done, because there were days where I could <clears throat> could barely walk, and um, we our bathroom is in our bedroom, and I could barely walk from the bed to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, it just it just taught me to appreciate the people in my life mm -hmm. more. My prayer life became very very um, relevant. Mm -hmm because I was calling on Jesus every chance I got okay. because I knew I would make it with him. Mm -hmm. so, so your faith was really important yes, during yes. this period. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And um, once I was done with the chemo, I was going to start the radiation. The radiation was not bad other than the burning of my skin mm -hmm. and it didn't necessarily hurt it was just me being able to see what it was doing mm -hmm. to my skin so that was challenging with that part because radiation didn't hurt but um, it was tedious because you had to go every week every week every week every week so um, but it wasn't as bad as chemo not at all. So it sounds like during that period, the treatment for breast cancer kind of consumed a lot of your life. Yes, it did. It, it consumed my life to the point where once I, um, <clears throat> once I came out of the chemo and the radiation, I, I was on leave of absence from work medical leave of absence. And once I finished with everything, I just didn't feel like I was ready to go back to work. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I would always get, I would get so anxious every time I would think about it mm -hmm. because I didn't know how I was gonna be able to handle it because um, I also have MS, so um, brain fog is something that comes with MS anyway. And chemo fog is something that came with chemo. <laughs> so I was walking around foggy. You know, I, I could, it's some things that, some functions in my job that I know I didn't remember. Mm -hmm. I just didn't remember how to do them. So it was gonna be like starting all over. So I made the decision to um, not go back to work. And I actually had been working on that job for 22 years. 
22 years and six months. So I wasn't happy about having to leave, but it was something that I felt like I needed to do because I didn't want to go back and struggle. So I just decided not to go back to work. So that also changes self-concept. Yes. If you've been a woman who's you know, been working in a, um, a responsible position and then suddenly you're not doing that anymore. Yes. And after the radiation, I became, because radiation was the last step, at the end of the radiation, I felt lost because I wasn't, nobody was calling me. I didn't have any more appointments to go to. I didn't have anything to look forward to, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I became depressed. Mm -hmm. I lost interest in e doing anything mm -hmm. and going anywhere. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I was just to myself, totally to myself. And I couldn't really explain it or talk to anybody about it because mm -hmm. I just felt alone. Mm -hmm. I just it felt sounds lost. like you felt more alone after the treatment was over than during treatment. Yes, because during treatment, everybody is, how you doing, what's going on? Um, you look good, you, you look, everything going okay, you know. It was constant attention, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but at the end of radiation, there was no attention, nobody to talk to, nobody. I had a good support system because I do attend a church and everyone in my church was aware of my condition and what was going on with me. And they did call and check on me and everything. It's just a feeling of aloneness because you don't have anybody to talk to that could understand what you were feeling. Mm -hmm. So I kind of kept all those feelings inside and I guess it just took a toll on me. And that's when the depression came. So it sounds like you were not getting a sense from your friends at church and maybe from your husband that they understood how difficult it was to transition out of treatment into this next phase. Yes, because I'm I'm getting everybody telling me, okay, you done, you did it, girl. You I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I did it, but I'm not feeling victorious. Mm -hmm. I'm still feeling defeated because of the way that I was feeling. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like myself. And with going through breast cancer, I don't think I will ever be like I was mm -hmm. before. Tell me about that. I don't think I will <clears throat> mentally because of the, I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain where it comes from, but Mentally, I don't think I will ever be the same mm -hmm. because I don't think the same. And when I say that, I mean on a mental level, mm -hmm. I just don't feel the same. I don't feel the same. And then there's also some symptoms from the chemo that I still have. Mm -hmm. And that's... Um, numbness in my feet and in my hands, mm -hmm. in my fingertips. And it, it causes difficulty because a lot of times I'm holding, like if I grab my keys, they falling out my hand. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to put my earring on. I can't feel it. So it's, it's difficult. It adds time to getting ready to go somewhere. It adds time to doing things. I, I just don't mm -hmm. operate physically like mm -hmm. I used to. Sure. And that affects me mentally because mm -hmm. I get frustrated mm -hmm. sure. and anxious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and anxiety is another side effect as well mm -hmm. because there was a lot of anxiety with the chemo because 
I definitely was not myself because I didn't have any control over my vows. I didn't have any control over um, anything. I didn't have any, I didn't have control over my body. It's like the chemo was taking over and it was winning. But in the end, I won, but it didn't feel like it when I was going through it. What are some of the things you'd like a mental health professional or your your health care team to know about what it's like to be going through breast cancer? Um, I would like for them to know that when it's when you're done with the process, the radiation when you're at the end, mm -hmm. I think you would need more help mentally in order to try to get back to being yourself, mm -hmm. if that's even possible. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's possible, mm -hmm. but... <clears throat> Maybe get back, get to where you're going to be now after this experience, because it's, it's now part of who you are. Right, and I, and I guess it's how do you get, or how do you adjust to the new normal? Mm -hmm. What is gonna be considered your normal? way of doing things and living mm -hmm. and it's been an adjustment mm -hmm. and I would I, I think um, there needs to be more <clears throat> mental health support at the end mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you're able to try to get your life back mm -hmm. so maybe some recognition that 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 step is going to be a challenge that it's not going to be the same for everybody right but some real sensitivity that that's that's a a hurdle or a step that is not just a it's not just a sense of relief right there's now a, something new something new something out. else that you gotta deal with mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely so how do you think the experience of breast cancer has changed you it has changed me in a way that I want to enjoy the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I want to do some of the things that I have wanted to do and hadn't been able to do. Mm -hmm. It has made me um, a little more adventurous, not daring, but adventurous. Mm -hmm. And it, it has made me less fearful of trying things mm -hmm. that I have never tried. Are there some examples? <laughs> um, definitely certain foods. Okay. Because having no taste is like, I don't know, it's, it's something I never imagined you not being able to taste. That's something that we take for granted every day. When you that you can actually taste your food because when you're at a point where you can't taste anything, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely in the food area, mm -hmm. I'm very adventurous and daring in food. Good for you. <laughs> I'll try anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just about. Mm -hmm. Just about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I appreciate so much that you are willing to be here and to share some of you know, the experiences. And they haven't certainly all been fun at all. I mean, you've, you've shared some really challenging experiences with us, and I appreciate you being willing to Well, I that. am grateful for the opportunity because if I can help somebody else that's going through it, then I'm a winner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a winner. Yeah. I would agree with that. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.